Good evening and a warm welcome to Empowering You for Victory. Moi and I send our fondest love greetings to every one of you. I want to encourage you, and I know that you are being blessed and empowered with the empowerment sessions. Let us know if you are watching. Give us your comments. Also, if you experience testimonies, it'll encourage me. We do this to empower you, but we get so fulfilled as you get empowered and you experience God coming through in your life. So drop me a note or let us know who you are and uh, we would be greatly encouraged. Tonight I want to share with you that the manifested Word of God was and is the incarnation of God in human flesh. The manifested Word of God was and is the incarnation of God in human flesh, meaning God came in the flesh. So that is the manifested Word of God. I want to read from John 1 and just go through these verses with you as we feed on every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. John 1.1 1, 1 declares, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Praise God for that powerful verse of Scripture. In the Bible, we find these two beginnings. One in Genesis where the Bible says, in the beginning, God created Elohim, a plural name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, created the heavens and the earth, created a heavenly dimension and an earth dimension. But John, in recording his gospel, speaks about a beginning of the Word of God. He says, in the beginning. That means if you rewind and go to the beginning of the revelation of God to man as found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, John says, in the beginning was the Word. So you go back to the beginning and then there was something before the beginning. The beginning is not God's beginning. The beginning is man's beginning in Genesis 1.1. God does not have a beginning. He is from everlasting to everlasting. And God gave us time as a resource. So time can help us to measure and manage. If you don't have time, you can't measure and manage. And so time was never given to us to dominate us. But because we are in union with God, we dominate time. We use it, we dominate time, and we redeem time because we're operating from eternity with God, through God, in partnership with God, into time. And so John goes back from time into eternity. And he first goes to the beginning of time, the beginning of the record in John 1.1. 1, 1, and he says, in the beginning. Then he goes before the beginning by using the word was. In the beginning was the word. But then he says, and the word was with God. So the word and God were together in eternity. But then he even goes further and say, and the Word was God. Can you see that, family? It's so important to see this divine flow of God, to see this eternal flow of revelation. In the beginning, you go to the beginning, then there was something before the beginning that God used to begin time. And that was His Word. In the beginning was the Word, 
And then the Word was with God. God was working with His Word. But then He brings us to a place. The Holy Ghost, the teacher, the paracletus, brings us to a place where we understand that God and His Word is one. And the Word was God. So whenever you approach your Bible, whenever you sit in a meeting and the Word is being ministered unto you, whenever you meditate on the Word and feed off the Word, in your mind and in your heart, you must know that you are dealing with God. You must know God and His Word are inseparable. So you approach the Word of God understanding that the Word of God is the highest form of reality, is the highest form of truth. And so in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, but then he crowns it, and the word was God. Uh, verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. So it, it tells us how God operated in a beginning. He operated with his word. Now Hebrews chapter 11 explains it very beautifully that it is through faith that we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. So things that are seen were not made out of things which appear. The Word of God is the creative force of God. But the Word of God also tells us in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, that God upholds that which he created by the word of his power. It doesn't say power of his word. If it said power of his word, then it would mean that there is some power in the word of God. But because the Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power, it means that all God's power is in His Word. So God's Word is creative. It created from the beginning. God creates with His Word. But then God upholds with His Word. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were made by Him. Now it's going into a personal pronoun. It's letting us know the subject is the Word of God, but then it uses Him. So the Word of God is Jesus Christ. You must know that beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Word of God, the Word that God speaks is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the Word of God. Revelations teach us that that's one of his titles. He's called the Word of God. So all things were made by him. The Word of God here is a person. It is Jesus Christ. And without him, without Jesus Christ, there was, was not anything made that was made. So Jesus is the creator. The Word is the creator. Jesus is God. And so you cannot separate Jesus from God. You cannot separate the Word of God from Jehovah. Or you cannot separate the Word of God from Jesus. So without Jesus, without the Word of God, there was nothing made that was made. Then it goes on to tell us how this Word which is a person. It says, in him was life. Wow. So it's showing us that Jesus and the Word of God is one, but Jesus and the Word of God is the life of God. Wow, isn't that beautiful? In him was life, 
and the life was the light of men. So it's showing us now that the life of God gives light to men. So light is understanding. And light is a creative force that shows us that God is a moving God because light travels the speed of light. So God is a moving God. Hallelujah. The word of God is a moving word. And Jesus Christ is a moving Lord. He's a moving, working God in the name of Jesus. And what does this light do? It shines in darkness. So the life of God, it's a life of men, it's light, and it's the life of God, the light of God, Jehovah, Jesus, the Word of God, is designed to shine in darkness and dissipate darkness. So one definition of darkness is the absence of light. There cannot be darkness where there's light. When in Genesis 1-3, when God said, let there be light, the Bible says there was darkness upon the face of the deep, the front part of deepness. There was darkness. But God said, let there be light, and there was light. And the Apostle Paul picks it up in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, says the God of this world has blinded our minds lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine. And so God, who shone out of darkness, has shone his light in our hearts to push out darkness. Once darkness is pushed out, understanding will come to you. And the purpose of you getting understanding is that you would share the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So every time light shines, life is there, God is there, Jesus is there, and darkness cannot remain, but what you experience is the front side of Jesus, his face. Whenever God shines, whenever God's life is released, it is the face of Jesus. And you are having fellowship with Jesus. Oh, friendship with Jesus, fellowship divine. Oh, what blessed sweet communion. Jesus is a friend of mine. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness cannot understand it. The darkness comprehended it not. So darkness can never understand light. Darkness can never resist light. As soon as light shines, there is no darkness. As soon as light shines, there is sight. As soon as light shines, there is understanding. As soon as light shines, there is the face of Jesus. As soon as light shines, you have fellowship with Jesus. Oh, thank God for his word, family. And the Bible says in verse 14, and the word was made flesh. It brings it now to the birth of Jesus. The word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. When this light shines, it's full of grace. When this light shines, it's full of truth. And when Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, it was the incarnation of God. And the Bible says, he is the express image of God and the brightness of God's glory. So God richly bless you. I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll be so turned on to the word of God that from today, every time you open your Bible, it would not be like you reading a history book. It will not be like you reading a novel. 
It'll be you and God fellowshipping with one another and walking in the light as he's in the light. God richly bless you. Allow me to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you that the greatest teacher is the Holy Spirit. And all scripture is given by inspiration, breathing in of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be mature and thoroughly furnished for every good work. I bless your people now, Lord, that they are mature and thoroughly furnished for every good work they will do for the kingdom. I bless them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good night. God richly bless you. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye.